The line, the the line to insult uh, Sean's gun, Sean Connery's gun, uh, Boothroyd, named after the guy who was the, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the first internet commenter. That's what we said last that's night. That's exactly what Matt yeah. said last night. It, no, that's that's that's. I agree with you 100. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we gotta don't... take a talk about this guy. Break the world's because, first yeah, we... internet commenter. This is a guy who was reading and enjoying mm-hmm. the works of Ian Fleming. Mm-hmm. I say this is topping, <laughs> but he was not enjoying them fully. What's this? <laughs> Page thirty-four, line twelve. Words four through seven. You'll see. James Bond breaks out his Beretta. How do you feel about this? <laughs> A Beretta? I said, be honest. What the hell do you mean? So this, this uh, gentleman, this, this... A Beretta? What? <laughs> no, that's really... What the devil? <laughs> Crumb and seven. You got it. Uh, Ladies and back. I've, I've spent all morning... Parting my mustache. Oh, hold on a second. Yes. <laughs> For the lister. There's this guy, James Boothroyd. Jeffrey Boothroyd. Jeffrey Boothroyd, who is a, a weapons expert. He's reading this book and he's saying, well, yeah. this guy wouldn't, this type of guy would not carry that type of gun right. because X, Y, and Z writes to Ian Fleming and says, um, excuse me, but uh, <laughs> I don't think that your secret agent would be carrying a Beretta. <laughs> um, and... Uh, uh, Ian Fleming says, oh, all right. And so s- they strike up a, a correspondence, right? And they mm-hmm. start talking to each other. And then um, from that from that point on, James Bond, the character, carries the Walther PPK. Yeah. Um, but we, we saw on uh, – there's got to be a million editions of these movies, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah so, there's, there's... Uh, but, but this and the last one both have that. Oh, okay. It's there... basically a normal special feature. On yeah. the special feature of Dr. No, there's a visit <laughs> oh, with yes. the actual uh, Jeffrey Boothroyd. It's like five he... minutes long. Oh, it's and it's, it's really absolutely great. worth your time. It's yeah. This guy is a weird – he's like a cartoon character. Yeah. He's got this thick, bushy mustache that is parted in the center. So much so that there's a, like a river of skin. Yeah. It's not even yeah. just <laughs> parted. There's a, there's a gap. There's there's he's a divide. got male pattern baldness on his upper lip. <laughs> he does. <laughs> um, and, and he's talking about these guns. And then at one point he demonstrates the kind of holster that you should have. You know, if you don't, you don't have a chamois leather because a gun could get caught on it and it wouldn't get out and blah, blah, blah. Uh, so he favors the um, – rather than the shoulder holster, the stout leather. Stout leather. Which is uh, – it knocks on it and it's very solid and it's, uh, it's, not, it's not chamois leather at all. And uh, he says, I'll demonstrate uh, how easily the gun can get out. I'll do a quick draw uh, on you. So he's, he's like looking at the camera and he says <laughs> – that's a quick draw where it is like – Oh my god. We watched it like four. Or five. I couldn't I... stop watching it. He the look on his face, he puts this look of intensity on his face and he goes for the gun and he does like this little hop where it's the slowest quick draw you've ever seen. And I at one point I drew my imaginary gun and shot him. <laughs> It is absolutely worth seeking out. Uh, if you don't have the DVD, rent it. It's got to be on Just order it from Netflix. But, but Netflix what you're forgetting you to yeah. mention is that when he's talking about the chamois leather holster <laughs> and the stout leather holster, he's got a holster drawer and all of this is taking <laughs> yes. place in his fucking living room. Yes. Right. So then he, he opens a drawer and there's just literally a drawer full of random holsters. Some on belts, some not. Yeah, it's like and a junk drawer. Yes, <laughs> this is all, he walks over to some kind of like credenza and says, oh yes, well I'll show you what it's like to shoot. He opens up this fine English Louis Couture credenza or something, Louis and there is a target, just busted wood in there, and he's shooting things in his own living room. It's amazing. He's insane. Yeah, He's an insane person. This is, had YouTube been around in the 60s, you would be not robbed of millions of hours of this, because I feel like that's what everybody was like. Yeah. And they all would have made yeah. their Oh, my videos. God. If that yeah. guy had been alive during oh, – if, if YouTube God. had been around while that guy was alive, how, oh. how many great videos would he have Oh, posted? he'd have a History Channel show. He like. would be on Tosh more than Tosh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Jeffrey Boothroyd. Here's and a so, shitty fat pun. But, I'm but Tosh. Fleming names Q after him. Major Boothroyd. Yes. His name, Q – his, I mean, the first guy in Doctor No isn't Desmond Llewellyn who yeah. plays Q, but right. he's got that, that weird accent. I couldn't yeah, figure out where like, that guy was, was supposed to be from. Welsh or something. Like, Anytime like, I don't know an accent, from? I'm sure it's Welsh. It's Welsh, <laughs> it's Welsh or South Africa. <laughs> uh, but the, but this know. is the, uh, he not only abided this guy, but he named a character after him, which yeah. I think is is exactly what happened to Gene Roddenberry and Geordie LaForge. 
Really? He got a letter from a, a handicap fan <laughs> oh. saying how much he loved uh, Star Trek and, and he loved that, uh, you know, in the future maybe his handicap wouldn't be uh, so much of an issue and that he could probably maybe serve on the Enterprise. So, uh, Jordy LaForge uh, was named after. A guy named Jordy. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. Wow! So they gave him they gave him the handicap of being blind. Now, see, that's a lovely story, right? But I think that Ian Fleming was probably scared of this guy and all his guns. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I say, old boy, how about I name a character after you? Uh, I'll whatever you say. Yes, I suppose that'll do for now. <laughs> I lost it to the other. I'm hungry. Make me a sandwich. <laughs> oh, we were also talking about what it must be like to be married to this guy because he's so properly English and you know he's just so regretful he couldn't be in the Boer Wars or something and comes home and just – if dinner's not on the table. It's 601. Why isn't dinner on the table? <laughs> he seemed, like he, That guy, if I remember correctly, seems just old enough to have not been able to serve in World War II. Yes. Like, he must have been so yeah. bummed yeah. out. He yeah. probably missed both the, the Great War and World War like II. Like, he probably is the kind of uh, 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 gentleman that would have sat on his roof with a uh, rifle ready for <laughs> yeah. any German yeah. plane yeah. that came It's here. World War II, but he's wearing a doughboy World War I. <laughs> yes, yes, he pulls yes. a handkerchief out of his sleeve at one point. To demonstrate how shitty the chamois leather, yeah, I, I that confused me. He watched it about it four snag. times. I was like, "What? Okay, but you're, why don't you show us with the holster?" No, I just <laughs> like the chamois leather it might as well be a handkerchief. <laughs> anyway, you wouldn't know gun stuff. <laughs> wife, do what I say. You're you're not as quick with meals as last night's wife. The fire shot her. <laughs> With a Ruger 275. This is the appropriate gun to shoot a woman. That was a good Boothroyd detour, you guys. <sighs>